Well, I uh, think I'll get started. Uh, it's nine o'clock already. So hello and welcome to everyone here. So uh, bear with me, first timer. Uh, I'm not a morning person. I usually wake up around 11. <laughs> uh, and before that, I just go full lot of mode, right? Like <laughs> and uh, somehow I have to make this presentation last 90 minutes. And I have to choose my words carefully around the word bot. So it doesn't sound funny. And uh, so feel free to take deep breaths. Um, stretch, relax, and you know, uh, do it as much as you need during this session. Uh, during the presentation, I will be mentioning some blocks and some tools as well. I am not sponsored by any of them. It's just uh, things that you know I've used because they make my life easier, right? And um, oh, yep, that's it. Uh, so uh, this is you right here. Uh, the title is out of a low-budget sci-fi channel movie, right? <laughs> Uh, like Sharknado, so I'm surprised that you're here at all. <laughs> that, that tells me something about you, and uh, it's too late to change your mind right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, recently I read a book named The Meditations, and I loved the fact that it began with a whole chapter dedicated to uh, gratitude, to thanking others. And I would like to do something similar, so I would like to start by uh, you know, thanking all of you for being here. Uh, Thanks to the event organizers. Uh, so I offer an apology if I butcher, butcher names. Uh, I'm not from around here, as you can tell, probably tell. <laughs> so thanks to uh, Missy Janusko, actually. And uh, thanks to Kevin Marquette, uh, James Petty, John Junell, Harjit Daliwal, and every other person that was involved to make this event possible. And also thanks to my PowerShell heroes. Uh, I've seen some of them around. I've been stalking them to get photos. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, and uh, just to wrap this section, uh, I remember watching last year's presentation on YouTube from Jeffrey Snover, uh, Jason Helmick, Sidney Smith, and Dave Martins. And I would like to thank them for keeping their promise. It's uh, hard for me to describe the extent of how much PowerShell um, has been a game changer for, for me in my career and how that extends to a lot of people that you will never hear about, like you know, my family or friends. And uh, I, find it I find it amusing that even when I try to position myself uh, out of my comfort zone and move to the Linux and Red Hat side of things, somehow my PowerShell skills are what makes me stand out. And they have made me a relevant asset uh, you know, no matter uh, where I go. So uh, thanks to the PowerShell powers that be for empowering the little guy like me. And uh, yeah, I'll get moving to the, the rest of the presentation. So about me, uh, so my name is Eric. Uh, I'm an automation engineer. I'm from Mexico. I'm uh, currently doing provisioning and deployments with Azure, uh, Ansible, PowerShell, REST API integrations, and whatever my boss uh, comes up with, any crazy ideas. And uh, this is what you would usually find in my LinkedIn profile. Reality is more like this. Uh, I have a really long Mexican name, uh, like in telenovelas. And uh, I'm a scripter. I love scripting. Uh, I used to be a full-time musician not too long ago. And uh, my blog website is down right now. So if you look me up, you won't find it. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that when I get back. And uh, depending on, you, on who you ask, you might get this description of, of me. Uh, don't believe what you see there. Uh, the reward is also in Mexican pesos, so uh, not in US dollars. So uh, you don't get too excited about it. So I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a disclaimer of uh, what this presentation uh, will cover and what it will not. So uh, what to expect? Uh, so I mainly came here to tell you the story of how I was a sysadmin who could write some PowerShell and somehow I was inspired by someone else's idea and how somehow I managed to script my way into a different version of that same idea because I couldn't get uh, basically that model to work for me. <laughs> uh, so and everything that I learned in the process, right? Um, so this means that I will be doing demo of really old code. Uh, some of it I'm no longer proud of. Uh, so be gentle, please. Uh, it's always scary to look and share old code. I don't know if you have like looked at stuff that you wrote like five years ago that you were really proud of, and you know it's uh, not so cool anymore, right? So I did write some nonsense back then, and I still do. I'm just much better at hiding it, right? I'm not showing everybody what I'm doing. 
So what not to expect? So uh, the technical bits are mainly aimed at people who haven't written functions, modules from scratch, or are not familiar with REST APIs. Uh, and the story bits of the presentation will be more like drunken sailor uh, storytelling. Uh, so I will rumble a lot. And um, so it's also about this, uh, this uh, product I created with, with the module, and the product, the product died after I published the module. So uh, you know, I, I built this whole solution, and then uh, you know, the company decided to sell that, uh, that messenger application. And uh, yeah, so I mean, everything's still up there for some reason. But it, like, it's, it, it has no practical use anymore. <laughs> so I'll talk about the contents. Uh, so that's where we are at right now. I'll go through the story. I'll talk about, you know, um, basically what inspired me to, to get to it. So I, um, I was like, I always wanted to create UI tools. Uh, then I learned about chatbots. Then that got me to hear about chat ops. Then I had never heard about REST APIs in my life before. And uh, so how I got into that and how um, I used that as well to get myself into writing uh, functions and, and, uh, and a module for the first time. Then I'll be going through a small demo of, 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 that, um, of, that, of that bot and uh, then I'll just uh, go over some Q&A. So let's go to, to the story. Um, I'll be playing a few uh, video recordings while I explain the, at the beginning just for, for the background, and um, let me see. So uh, these were the first uh, bots I wrote. I named them prot bots because I wanted to make them distinct from from just chat bots because uh, th that's what I wanted to go for. And you know, uh, it's nothing to do with uh, or nothing similar to ChatGPT. Uh, the closest thing I did to that was to integrate uh, Wolfram Alpha, the uh, Wolfram Alpha API. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's, uh, I used the world from Alpha for just questions like, you know, are there any holidays in India this month? Or math questions or trivia questions, right? Just to play around with that. Uh, basically, when I finally got to, um, to start using REST APIs, you know, it was like a new toy for me, so I just tried to get my hands on every API I could, I could possibly <laughs> get into. But in essence, these were all just PowerShell chat-based bots that run PowerShell scripts. And uh, they would run them. They would run the scripts either locally or on remote machines. And you might be asking, what were you trying to achieve with all of this? Uh, what was your end goal? And uh, I had no end goal to be honest. I just, uh, I just wanted to have fun. I just wanted to create a wrapper for my scripts uh, that was, you know, cool and was friendly, and uh, you know, that would help me use all this existing infrastructure that I, we had. And uh, so that was the, the messenger application and the scripts that I had already uh, available, right? Uh, quick question, does anybody recognize the um, dashboard on the left side? So, um, so I used a module named uh, PowerShell Universal by Adam Driscoll. So it will, um, will help you build, you know, um, interfaces uh, and, and the web applications for, for your uh, PowerShell scripts, right? So uh, shout out to, to Adam there. Okay, so in short, I wanted to use the available messaging system as a cool and friendly wrapper to trigger existing scripts and automations, make it all available to my colleagues, and uh, you know, save us the need for building a new web portal, uh, save us the need to do crazy RDP and SSH jumps, and all of that involved. And uh, of course, you know, with, with security in mind. And um, here in this demo bit, I was just starting to, I found out that I could send uh, forms from within the, 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 the bot. And, um, and you know that would replace like writing actual parameters on you know in on like in in the actual uh, command, and instead of just typing in the parameters, I could use text boxes, radio buttons, uh, uh, check bo check boxes, lists, and things like that, like right there. Like for example, here I was testing the um, the text box and the radio buttons, and uh, we used the send button there. So funny story, it took me like two weeks to figure out. This was named uh, text box, so <laughs> took me two weeks to actually get, get to that because I uh, also like it's a multi-line text box because that's what I want to to, to use, 
and you know all the examples and, and uh, all, everything I could find was limited to like single line text boxes. So uh, it's funny how just you know googling the right keyword will actually get you there much faster. And uh, at the time, yeah, I was I was uh, this was like the last version that I didn't publish. I was messing around with the with the forms here. Uh, I found this thing named Pipe Dream, which I will talk about later. And uh, yep, that's about it. Let me move forward. So about UI tools. So uh, the first thing that got me into creating this was the magic around creating things with buttons. I, I just, you know, there's something uh, pleasant and cathartic about pressing a button and doing what you want, you know, uh, doing what you need. And uh, I recently got a MacBook uh, to work with. Uh, so also, if you use, I'm, I'll be really sloppy here, like, you know, because I, I, uh, I'm still not familiar with uh, all the commands and shortcuts. And uh, it's been fun, but one thing is that I can no longer call the system uh, Windows Forms namespace. That means I cannot bring up, you know, like uh, an easy form that I can uh, use and share for creating very simple uh, UIs. Uh, and uh, so let me show you what I mean with a very simple example. Uh, this is not really a UI. I'll be just making use of uh, prompts and alerts available in, 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 uh, in OSX. But uh, again, it's just, I just want to show you, like, uh, that you know, creating a button just feels right. I'm not sure if 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 you get that 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 feeling as well, but I I definitely do. I find it uh, magical. So I was just messing around with uh, with this uh, recently. So again, uh, this is I'll just I'm just basically calling the system at events from from the OS itself. And uh, and doing just what the world needs in a conference, another uh, matrix reference. So yeah, again, you you know you had you get your message, you get your button, you decide to do something with it, and you feel better about it, right? So um, again, you will always find like multiple ways to you know do the same thing, and you know it always it can always get more complicated. So that's why I actually chose to like do this really simple thing, right? But like getting there took me a while, right? It's uh, <laughs> because I I had never used uh, a Mac before in my life. But uh, so and it, it feels nice to to you know get to get to the point where you start getting familiar with with the, the simple things, right? That you can do with PowerShell even in um, in a different operating system thanks to PowerShell Seven. Um, so let me move back to the presentation. So yeah, as a Windows sysadmin, uh, I always wanted to build tools for me and my colleagues. Uh, you know, click a button, solve our problems. And uh, if you have tried to do this in Windows, there is multiple ways to you know achieve more professional results. Uh, and there's a lot to explore there. I tried everything. I tried you know using Windows Forms, uh, WPF and SAML, uh, PowerShell Studio, Posh GUI, Terminal GUI, PowerShell Universal, and so on. And uh, you know, I, I understand that you know when you're just getting started, it can be too overwhelming uh, to go through all of them, especially you know as a beginner. And uh, if you're like me, you will just be obsessed with trying all of them and comparing them, and you know find what best works out for you. So these are you know some to to uh, look at. And uh, but anyway, you know sometimes you just want something different or something simple that works everywhere. And uh, I know we like managing things from, from code and config files, but uh, you know, there is this amusing cycle, right? That uh, you code it, then you, like somebody, you or somebody else will create a user interface for it. Then you will need to you know, uh, programmatically do something with it. So you code again with, you know, with an API. And then somebody else creates another UI tool over that. And uh, you know, we go into this never ending loop of, of, of uh, user interfacing and, uh, and, and, and uh, and um, using commands, right, from, from prompts as well to, to, to achieve our ends. And um, so why is all this relevant, right? So, uh, so I always ended up partially satisfied with the overall experience creating this. And this set me on a quest to search for a different solution. And a different solution that was cross-platform 
that didn't involve setting up a uh, full web stack uh, myself and maintaining it, and that was fun to use as well. So I'll move to the next component that set me on, on that path, and I will start uh, talking about chatbots. And yes, that was generated with, with, uh, with some AI. <laughs> so uh, who else here as a little kid wanted a robot friend assistant that would do tasks or still does, <laughs> right? And uh, so I, that reminds me of like a Megamind, Dr. Robotnik, uh, an Invader Sim, and I don't know it's always villains, right? <laughs> so not, not, not a pattern here, I think. Uh, so anyway, that desire led me to investigate chatbots as an alternative. And up, up until then, my experience as a user with chatbots was not, uh, was not great. Uh, I always felt unpleasantly underwhelmed by the website customer service, uh, service bots and the uh, support bots as well. Uh, they always seem like an obstacle between me and the contact us form to get to a real person, right? And um, so then I thought, I mean, what if they were actually useful? It would be cool to actually, you know, uh, do something with this. And uh, like I always do, I thought, you know, someone else must have had this idea already. So I Googled PowerShell plus chatbots. And that led me to um, the next chapter about chat ops. And uh, the first items uh, from my search result were about Poshbot, chat ops, and Brandon Allen. So um, I'm not sure if he was the first to uh, bring up this concept to PowerShell, but he was the one that got me rolling, right? And uh, while researching for this presentation, I found some really cool uh, talks on this subject by Ben Hodge, Jason Hunt, Matthew Hodgkins, Steve Lee, and others. If you're curious, uh, you want to get more in depth in this topic, I'll leave all these resources in, in GitHub, right? And uh, so anyway, back to the story. Uh, I was so in love with this concept that I even bought uh, the, the book as a way to support uh, this project. And uh, shout out to Brandon if you're looking at this. And if you only had one sale, that was me. So what is chat ops? Uh, so let's go quickly over some of these uh, concepts. Uh, GitHub is credited with coming up with the term chat ops. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but that's, that's what I found. And uh, chat ops is a collaboration model that allows task automation through a chat platform. So it's basically running commands and tasks from things like Discord or Slack or Microsoft Teams. And you know, it brings together in the same group chat people, tools, processes, conversations, approvals, and it just makes it easier and more transparent for teams to work and respond to issues, right? And get the, the job done. So it's like having a virtual assistant in your group chat that can help you trigger automated tasks, share information, run commands, and all of that just by typing a message, right? calling out this, uh, this assistant. So what is Poshbot? Uh, Poshbot is a chatbot created by Brandon Allen using PowerShell, and it can turn PowerShell scripts and more into chatbot commands. And uh, throughout its history, Poshbot has uh, worked with Discord, Slack, and Microsoft Teams. I'm not sure about Microsoft Teams anymore, but uh, that, that, that's the history anyway. And let me go back again to the story. Uh, so yeah, I got really excited. I couldn't wait to use it to streamline my automations and share it with my colleagues to make it work. You know, save us from jumping between servers, manual executing scripts, and avoid headaches. I watched all the videos available. I devoured the PDF. I imported the module from the PowerShell gallery. I was all ready to get started, and uh, there was a catch. The company I was working for didn't use Microsoft Teams or Slack. So uh, you know, I had no options to, to actually uh, use, use, use Poshbot there. But I wasn't going to give up. Uh, I'm hard-headed. The company had its own messaging app. The messaging app was named Circuit. And uh, I found that it supported chatbots. And I thought, oh, easy. I'll just look at Poshbot's code. Uh, I'll, add it, I'll add Circuit as a platform. And, or I'll reverse engineer it. Or I'll figure it out, right? Little did I know, uh, it's, it, it was harder than I thought, right? So I'll, I'll um, exit the presentation for a second, and now we can look together at the, the module there. So this is uh, Poshbot's uh, repo. 
right? And so uh, I'll, I'll cut this short. I'll just go straight to the um, to the code here. So I think that's the one. So this was the first time I, uh, you know, really looked at uh, how a module looked. And uh, so we have our uh, module files here, right? So I was like, okay, cool. So you know, I just wanted to get to the part where it was calling out to um, to Teams or, or, or Slack to see how that worked. And so I was started browsing around these. Let's see the private public functions task classes. He, Brandon is really classy. He really likes using this. And of course, all, all this was uh, way above my head. It still is. <laughs> So uh, yeah, long story short, I just couldn't figure this out, right? <laughs> it was too overwhelming for me. So we'll start poshbot, let's see, get poshbot. So these, these were like uh, to manage the bot itself. So th this is a small description of what I actually did, right? Look. <laughs> so uh, I, I was probably as lost as I am right now. Plugins. Oh, it's implementations. I remember now. So this is where you would find like the specific uh, platform. So what I got from here is that somehow you needed to create like um, like an HTTP uh, listener, right? Some kind of endpoint connection to talk back and forth. somehow, and I saw him doing some HTTP uh, calls there, some WebSocket stuff. So let's look at Teams. So yeah, I couldn't figure this out, right? I didn't, I wouldn't, I was not able to, to actually, uh, you know, use circuit here, integrate somehow. And uh, let me see. So the next thing I did was look at circuit's uh, documentation. Luckily, they had a very decent documentation, you know, how to set up your environment. Um, and then I found uh, these uh, libraries here and SDKs. And I was like doing here, oh, best suited for, for, for bots, right? And this looks suited for bots as well. So, I mean, I am not a web dev, so I had no idea you know, what Node.js was exactly. And uh, so first thing I tried was to integrate this in PowerShell. And I know there's a module now, but back at the time, I think it didn't exist, and I couldn't find it anyway. I couldn't get this to work. So the next thing I did was look at the REST API documentation. And uh, I had no idea what a REST API was. We will cover that in a few. But here is the documentation and, and Swagger. And so I remember I told somebody about this, and he, he said, like, oh, cool, it, it has uh, Swagger, so you know, it should be easy for you. Uh, long story short, I didn't use Swagger at all. <laughs> I actually wrote everything from scratch. And uh, now there's a module that like, imports you know, all this and creates the PowerShell module for you automatically. And, uh, but I didn't do that, of course. I took the long road. And uh, so I started looking at these uh, APIs not knowing what they were. So this, again, this looked like uh, some kind of uh, directory or URL, and I saw what, like, this is what's this get stuff, boot stuff, so it's post, so it looks like, you know, you can, like, uh, get data and uh, set data, right? So, all, all right, so uh, you can manage conversations and maybe send messages, okay, cool, add users do stuff with, with it, right? Okay, so yeah, I saw this and I still had no idea what to do with it, right? So let me go back to the presentation and tell you the rest of, of the story there. Uh, so another thing I picked up from Brandon's uh, module was that he was using an exclamation mark uh, in front of the keywords to search for the, uh, the to run the commands. So I liked that idea and uh, other than that, just that I needed 
some kind of listener and module and functions. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that was my, what my caveman brain could, could get out of that. So let's talk about REST APIs. I really struggled to understand what that was as well. I'm not trying to roast you know, anyone except myself. I'm too dumb to understand some concepts. But when I read that, I like, had no idea what that meant for me. Like, it meant, meant nothing. Uh, so I kept searching. And uh, that didn't work for me either. It uh, was cool to find out about Roy Fielding, though. Uh, really interesting. And uh, that didn't help me either. And then I was like, Post, I thought it was you know, a tasty cereal brand. Uh, so OK, I kind of get something now. It's code to communicate software programs and request services, getting there. So then I resorted to watch some videos, videos on the subject. Uh, really good video. <laughs> and after questioning my life decisions and wondering if I should quit IT altogether, uh, I used my time machine to ask future Eric or actually uh, ChatGPT. <laughs> and broadly speaking, what I got is that it's helper code to communicate requests to and between web servers or applications, right? So that's, uh, this sums up what I understood. And you know, it's an oversimplistic definition that fits my worldview. <laughs> and I still need to get my hands, I mean, I still needed to get my hands on it, right? Like use it to really grasp it. So in the next chapter, uh, I will show you the process that I went through with the Chrome network tools, invoke web request, invoke REST method, curl, and postman, which uh, eventually trans transformed my career to, and you know, puts bread on the table now. And I really, really rarely learn in a straight line. Uh, I have to throw myself into uh, the rabbit hole and uh, find my way out to understand how things work. I can't remember exactly the full trial and error process I went through. Uh, I remember it finally made sense when I played with webhooks. So what you see on screen is a short summary of, of that process, right? So um, I discovered webhooks by accident. I uh, analyzed them with uh, Chrome developer tools. I, at the time, I didn't know you could right click and copy the request as, uh, as curl or as, as, as PowerShell code. Uh, now I know that, but so that will simplify this process. Um, so then I heard about Postman as well, which really helped me, like um, debug, you know, and and and, uh, and get like my my um, functions straight. And I used a lot of translation from Postman, from curl to Postman to PowerShell, uh, and from Postman to PowerShell. I mean. So uh, just to wrap this uh, about webhooks. Broadly speaking, webhooks are commonly used in applications and services to enable communication between, uh, and do automation between systems. They, they use events. And uh, I will actually show you uh, what I had to go through to, to understand this, like my hands-on approach to, to learning. Uh, let's see. I actually had it here. So one day I just stumbled across this uh, site, which is named webhook.site. Let me delete those events there. And this really simplified things for me. Oh, so it's like a URL, right? It's an endpoint. Nice. Um, I don't know how I got to this, but because it, I didn't need it the first do it the first time. But you can just copy this and paste it in your browser, right? So basically, I didn't know how the internet worked. <laughs> now I have a better idea. So you see, when I when I uh, you know uh, go to that site, it starts creating events here, right? And uh, like uh, then I saw like oh, there is a, a get, you know, uh, word there, right? So uh, it's trying to do a get request. Oh, and it's giving me data about you know the uh, like the browser I'm using, the OS, and some other stuff. All right. So um, what's this right here? Let's see. Uh, the next thing I did was to open developer tools because a friend told me about it. So you go to the network tab and let's monitor what I'm doing here. So yep, I get my event here, 
and I get this thing right here. So when you click on it, like here is where my mind started like opening up. So oh, so, so that's a request method, right? And I'm getting a status code that you know it, it actually reached the destination. Okay, here is header stuff, uh, body stuff, cool, cool, cool. All right, so here is uh, the next thing that really helped me was to just right click here, copy, and um, so copy this request as PowerShell or as curl. Let's see, and let's look at it. Well, uh, for the record, you can also do this from here. Like, uh, you can go to raw content, oh, not raw content, sorry, uh, export as uh, curl, and if you paste it, Actually, let's have that here. I get this uh, curl command. So of course, I had to run that to see what it did, which again does the same thing, right? Just uh, I'm showing like different ways that I had to try to to grasp it. Right? Okay, so I run that. Okay, something happened. I get a new request here. Just do that again. And that's how I discovered curl. Um, yeah, I'm like 30 years behind. <laughs> and then, uh, so let's look at the PowerShell version of that. Uh, well, actually, I want to look at the, uh, the, uh, the way that um, Chrome will actually uh, get it for me. So uh, here I learned about splatting as well. Novel concept. And uh, so here in PowerShell, I need to replace this with backticks. Let me do that. Uh, also, sorry for right clicking and running. I still don't know how to get F8, uh, use F8 in my Mac computer. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, no, didn't barf at me, no errors. And here my webhook site is telling me that I have another event. And, you know, it came from, um, from Chrome. Okay, so it, it actually, uh, you see all that data there? Uh, so it's just cookie information and, you know, information from, from, from that uh, request from Chrome. But I could simplify all of this, just get rid of this, and I will still get the same. So it's a, a, a get method uh, request from selection. And there you go. And now I didn't get all that data right there, right? It's just a much simpler request. Let's see what it does with PowerShell now. Uh, so copy, it's PowerShell. So again, I get all this uh, cookie information and information about the browser, and let's run that and see what happens. And I get my request here. Same story. And again, same as with uh, Carl. You can just like really simplify this. So this is where I learned like the header and body are just like things appending you know, strings to your uh, URL string. And uh, that also like simplified things in, in, in my caveman head, right, to, to get this to work. So I, in this particular case, I don't need to start a session. I don't need to send credentials. So this makes it much easier. Book uh, request, here I. And you can select your uh, method, is it? Yeah. And then you have the same like uh, get uh, post past I uh, mean post put batch so on so on. So let's do a get request here. Run. Okay. Oh, nice. I, I love objects. So my status code uh, and all the other information I get back and my request right here. Whew. So. Uh, what also really helped me in this um, 
was to, to use Postman. So I'll go over Postman. I, I cannot live without Postman anymore. Um, raw text. You can actually paste a, a uh, curl command. So uh, if you were wondering why do you keep doing that, this is why, because uh, it was just easier to get it working in, in curl and Postman. If, I, if it worked in Postman, it just meant I would be able to make it work in PowerShell. So that, that's why I went through all of this um, right here. Okay, get rid, just get rid of this here to make it faster. Okay, so that's it. You import it, you send it. Okay, so I got, I got my response right there. I see it right here, it worked. And um, mm, believe it or not, this is, I know I'm doing the same thing, but when you are trying to uh, you know, check if there's connectivity issues between your, uh, the API you're working with from your machine, or you know, from machine you're working on that needs to make the requests, this will save your life. <laughs> because then you know it's going out to the internet, right? And you might have some network issue going on. And another cool thing about Postman that I'll just uh, share with you here in case you haven't used it, there is this code snippet uh, thingy right here. So you can you know, convert that to multiple languages and there's a PowerShell uh, uh, tool here that will just uh, do that for you and will save you a ton of time as well. The last one I promise, so. Right, last request. So um, let me go back to the presentation again. Okay, so we covered like an overview of you know how to start getting yourself uh, getting getting your feet wet with um, with REST APIs. We use web webhook side. We checked out uh, Chrome Developer Tools, um, you know, curl uh, the invoke web request and invoke REST method commandlets and a little bit of Postman as well. So let me move to the next uh, thing that I was not familiar with. So uh, I needed to create advanced functions as the basic items for my module, right? And uh, so I did create a few functions before to handle, to do ha error handling and keep things clean, but I never really dived into you know, how much I could do with them. Let's go over it. So um, PowerShell functions are user-defined functions. That means you, you create them, you define them. And uh, the cool thing about them is that you can leverage the same features and behaviors, uh, behaviors as commandlets. And uh, they provide you know, consistency, consistency as well. And uh, they will just power up your whole, uh, your whole scripting experience. There is a lot of benefits uh, doing this. My personal favorite is uh, is a commandlet binding. Uh, there's other things, but that's that's my favorite because I get instant access to error action, uh, the error action parameter, and then it just makes flow control and error handling so much 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 easier. And uh, this is this next slide will show you a simplified example of uh, what we would typically encounter. So. Um, Yeah, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. That's that's the next slide. So before that, so I'll I'll just go over the the anatomy of of a uh, function. So you do the function declaration, right? So um, you set the function name and the script block that will contain the the code of that function, the commandlet binding attribute, which will uh, superpower your 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 script and um, it will let your code be, uh, behave like a, like a PowerShell commandlet. It's optional, but uh, like I don't think you want to miss that. Um, then you can set parameters as well, and you can define the input values for the function using the param block. Uh, parameters can include validation attributes, default values, and Python support. Uh, blocks are optional. I've rarely seen them in use in community modules. Uh, you will see them. Uh, they are very useful, but again, uh, I have rarely seen them, to be honest. And uh, so for that, we have the begin block, which just you know, runs once before processing any input. 
and it's useful for initializing variables. Uh, you have the process block that uh, process input data. So it will get that data from parameters or from the pipeline. And it runs uh, once for each item that is passed through the pipeline. That's another cool thing about uh, functions, that you get instant access to passing uh, objects from, from the pipeline and chain it with uh, other commandlets or other, other, um, other functions as well. And uh, there's the end block, which runs once after all the input has been processed, and it's typically used for cleanup or for returning your results. So this is what the previous elements would look like together. Now, uh, there is, I will show you a simplified version of what you would typically encounter in community uh, functions. Um, so this uh, is something I wrote really quickly for, for, for this. Uh, so let me show you what that does. So let me show you that it works. Uh, oh, I did it up. <laughs> Wait, should I share somewhere? That's the one. Right, so yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to do. The cool thing about it is that, again, you, you have good access to your uh, defined parameters, right? Uh, I define here a memory uh, threshold. And uh, you get verbose, you get a reaction, and you know, all the cool toys there that will make your life a lot better. Uh, we will see other examples later uh, when reviewing the module itself. Um, so the first function I created for, for the module was the listener. So I really wanted to build my proof of concept, and I knew first I needed some kind of HTTPS request listener. However, the REST API from Circuit didn't provide this functionality. It was only available for a JavaScript and, uh, and, and Node.js, and uh, I never figured out how to integrate that in PowerShell. So the first function I created was an actual abomination. Uh, but I really wanted to get this proof of concept uh, going. So what I did, did with that function was uh, to loop the conversation messages. And it created a timestamp every, after every command keyword was detected. So it picked up the exclamation mark keyword. It would set a timestamp and uh, you know, run uh, the script that it was supposed to and come back with, with the results. And in order to avoid going all the way back to the beginning of the conversation and run all the requests that had already been taken care of, uh, it would timestamp uh, again and, and run from that time, like uh, the request, like filter everything previously. So this had two really big issues. So apart from micro DDoS attacking the messenger, the, the sandbox server, because I was just getting, doing get requests in the loop, right? Uh, if the script stopped for any reason, the messages that run while the script was not running, uh, you know, they would get lost, right? Um, so that's something else I learned. Um, would you like to take a look at that function? I can, I can probably look it up. I didn't prepare it here, but you could look at it really quickly. Let's see, uh, where do I have it? Uh, Public function, I think this is the one. Yeah, here. So just a loop. <laughs> While true, you know, uh, I should have done right verbose here. <laughs> but I didn't. And uh, let's see, invoke rest method. So this. Yeah, so this invoked the listener. Uh, so I would parse through the you know results and uh, look up the commands in the list. Uh, the commands were here, uh, right here. And we'll just loop through this, find a keyword that matched that, and run that script. And I create like a private 
meaning that it was not available you know, for, for the, the user. The, the, I, I created this function as well to run that script in particular. Um, so let me go back to the presentation. So anyway, don't do that. <laughs> or do, but just don't do it in prod. So yeah, I knew this was not ideal, and eventually I found tools like PipeDream. Uh, has anyone heard about PipeDream here? It's, it's a really great tool, like it will just uh, give you some infrastructure in between. It works as an intermediary and allows you to create like uh, an event list for async handling, and you can also connect different APIs together with that, and there is a free uh, version with some limitations that, that it will be more than enough, I promise. And um, um, so yeah, I didn't have to create that infrastructure myself. All I did was use PipeDreams API to create my proof of concept. And it basically created an, it created an event, and then I deleted that event after it was serviced. So you know, I created the event that uh, if my bot stopped for some reason, um, like uh, nothing would happen, I would just start the, the service again, and it would go back to, to, the, uh, to this intermediary, look at the events, and see what it had dispatched already, right? So, okay, so I'm missing all of these requests, I'll just work on them, and, and that is it. That also allowed you know, for async um, management of, of, of those. It's out of the scope of this uh, presentation, uh, but if you want to uh, you know, get to, to, to that, I suggest you, you check them out. So anyway, if this, idea, this proof of concept was a success, then I could probably, you know, get the attention from the application developers and, you know, create a more professional and robust solution, you know, at the time, or that was my hope anyway. So let's move over to modules now. So uh, when I talk about modules, I am referring to script modules. Uh, this because this could also be like uh, DLL binaries, and uh, I'm too stupid for that. And uh, I, all I know is how to import them and use them. So uh, in this context, a module uh, for PowerShell is a package of PowerShell functions, commandlets, scripts, and other resources. And they are organized to, uh, you know, to promote ease of use. They also allow users to load and share components. So once you have like a collection of scripts, right, that do similar things, uh, you can just put them in a module file. You can actually just, you know, copy paste all your functions inside the, the PSM1 um, file, or you can, you know, direct them to an actual directory as well and, you know, tell, tell your model where to find those. So this will allow users to load and share these components, uh, you know, keep you more organized and, you know, manage your, your scripts. Where am I? Uh, all right, right. So let me let me look at that. No, hang on. Because I can't really see here. There we go. Okay. So um, so yeah, these are the typical components of a PowerShell module. So basically, you have your main directory, right? That will be the name of your module. Then you have your uh, module file, the PSM one file, right here. So that's the. Um, so this file. Um, contains or references the location of your functions or commandlets and your variables as well. You have a module manifest file, which is not mandatory, but it's good to have. It's, uh, it provides metadata for, for, for your module, right? Like the version, who wrote it, uh, any dependencies, and anything else you want to add there. And it also specifies the, the function commandlets there. And you know what's available or not to be exported. Uh, then you have your functions folder, and inside that functions folder, you can actually have your public or private folder, as you have probably seen, and you can have that or not. You can just have your, uh, you know, your functions, your scripts, basically there directly, that call out those functions. And you may have optional sub sub subfolders, and uh, I can show you that in a bit. So for a detailed and in-depth guide on how to create a module from scratch, uh, I really recommend Kevin Marquette's uh, post on this topic. He goes really, 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 really uh, in-depth in every single step of how to do things. And um, we can dive a little bit into what 
like like my module looks like uh, when we look at the demo, right? But um, if you want to learn more about uh, modules, just just read that. Okay, so let's get to the actual demoing. Finally, <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, wait, not this. I have my cheat sheet here. <laughs> I, I have really bad memory, so I have to write down everything I do, otherwise I get lost. Okay, so let's look at the GitHub site that I created, just for nostalgia's sake, and because I have to make this last a bit longer. Uh, all right, so this is my GitHub uh, repo, 2021. Well, all right, so yeah, just basic stuff like you know how to install the module from the PowerShell gallery, uh, or how how you would import this locally as well. Uh, let's look at the. I even wrote documentation for this. I wrote a whole wiki. Um, so getting started. Set up the sandbox, everything there. I just want to look at a couple of files here. Let's see how to change them. Keyboard commands, this will be fun. Test your pod. Okay, so this is just how to create the, the bot in circuit. We can look at that later. Mm -hmm, set up your sandbox. Okay, so this is how keyboard commands worked in, in, in the module. Like you just would just create your script and put it there in that folder. And uh, and this looks ugly. I, I was actually planning to, you know, uh, put that in a in a drop down list, but I didn't get to that. Um, so you would send like the my commands keyword. It will uh, display the commands available for you. Uh, for the uh, API, like uh, or for for using it, you would need like uh, to get a token. Uh, you know what conversation you wanted to. Uh, to send that to, and uh, the item ID. So the, the bot took care of this uh, automatically. Like it would just uh, you know read the request, extract the conversation ID, and the the item ID is like uh, like in that conversation you will have like multiple like uh, uh, messages, and it would just pick like the last uh, message that would be the item ID. For some reason, I thought this was a good idea. I don't know why. So uh, like. You, you see that, like this name and description, um, it actually picks it up from the script with some HTML in there. <laughs> uh, so that would be the name of the script. I mean, the, the, well, uh, the plugin or yeah, whatever, and uh, some description, right? So I was expecting everybody creating this to uh, adding, adding something to um, actually add this, this block. And then you would just run your script, right? If you wanted to send something back to, to circuit, then you would just like uh, use the actual uh, commandlet, or I mean the function from, from the module itself. Well, that's where it's linked. Okay, so I, I was describing there that if you wanted to like do tables and you know, uh, present your information as tables, you would need to uh, mingle a little bit with with um, with the convert to HTML uh, commandlet there. So how to run your prodbot? I try to do that as simple as possible. Just this commandlet start circuit prodbot, like that would be the listener, like what conversation you want to listen to, and the token, and that's it. You know, in, in hindsight, uh, it's really annoying to have the token parameter there and use it every time. I should have just used that, like a configuration file, right? And uh, have it import the, the token uh, and generate tokens automatically as well. But uh, I, I didn't. So for every, t every time you want to use this, you will need to use the token uh, parameter. Okay, and this is just basically stuff on how to get conversations, how to get your token and how to send a message. Mm, 
So uh, part of the module fun is also to uh, upload your, your modules to the PowerShell gallery. I don't know why I have 146 downloads. I su suspect it's actually bots <laughs> that, that do that. And because um, other than me, I don't know anyone else that, well, just very few people that actually downloaded this. And uh, so this is what, when you upload it here, is what uh, actually you know, helps you do install module in, in your uh, PowerShell shell. And uh, and install the module from from the internet from the gallery, right? So that that's what it did there. And let me show you a little bit about Circuit Sandbox before I actually um, need to open it up anyway, so you can see what it does. So this is the Messenger application form. Uh, I don't know why it still exists, uh, but I'm really happy. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to show it to you. <laughs> so yeah, like it's just you know. Standard, uh, oh nice, standard um, messenger application. Here is an example of like uh, of, of what I was trying. So I was not lying to you. It's right there, <laughs> like this. Uh, so I lost the code that actually does this. Um, so it won't do anything, but uh, but yeah, it, it happened, right? So let's um, let's look at these manage applications. So this is where I would define the, the bots. I have uh, Johnny Five there, Marvin, uh, just some generic bot there, and the T800. So um, I like this is where you would like uh, find the client ID. This is very standard for, for REST APIs. Like you have a client ID and you have your secret. And you need those to, to generate tokens, right? Uh, so those tokens will allow the transaction, right? Uh, to, to do your, your uh, REST request. And I've already uh, done that. And I've already stored that in the store, uh, secret store. So let's go back to the code and show you how that worked. Uh, VS Code. So first, so first thing you want to do, of course, is install the module and import the module. And I like adding verbose because I, I always like to see what's happening behind, uh, if I can. Uh, run selection. So yeah, connecting to the partial gallery, downloading stuff. It also makes me seem smarter than I am with my family. You think I'm you know, doing hacking. <laughs> and I, I just let them believe whatever they want. So. Um, all right, so yeah, remember the client ID from here? So that would be it. Then the secret, um, well, this, this would be like the, this client secret. So I used the um, secret store here, so I don't uh, show it like on screen. Doesn't matter though, but you know, uh, it's good to, uh, to talk about this and uh, promote it. And here is how I would get the token. So I create this uh, function that was request secret token. Uh, you know, I specified the client ID, the client secret, and that is it. Then let's look at these conversations uh, command. So let me get this first. Ooh. I was not expecting that right now. Uh, oops. <laughs> Oof, yeah. <laughs> Oof. All right, so otherwise I would have to reset my whole store. <laughs> so yeah, don't lose that. Uh, don't forget about it. Otherwise, you need to reset your whole store, and you will lose all your secrets. Um, so right, where was I? I da, 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 da. So I have my token now, which you know I can renew. And uh, let's let's see what this does. Because I don't remember. <laughs> so it would get the conversations. Uh, it would get like all the conversations. So right now I'm just going to pick some random conversation there. Run selection. So yeah, this is listing all the conversations available. Where where uh, so basically where that bot um, is. Uh, so that. The body is a member of multiple groups, right? So it will list like the uh, available groups that, uh, or the available conversations that it's a member of. 
and this is what you see right here, right? And it will list like who else is a member of that, and so on. So Johnny Five will always be there because again he needs to be a member of that group to actually participate, right? And um, so for this demo, I'll just grab the first conversation there, and I'll save that in, in a variable. So run selection. And so conversation ID, I have my conversation ID now. So now I will send a message to, to circuit. Go back to. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll, I'll set the title of that message, the message itself, and um, this attachment variable for later. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'll be sending that, and let's see what happens. Just fingers crossed it still works. I'm just kidding, I tested this last night, so it should be okay. Or not. Okay, so it looks, looks like it did send something, but I don't see it here. And it didn't work, of course. <laughs> let me see what's going on here. Okay, so let me run this all again. There you go. Phew. Okay, so um, so you see it's uh, it's interacting now with the uh, with this. So fist bump. Uh, it's not the same robot, but whatever. And um, so yeah, so that that's how I basically got to interact. You could like read the messages, uh, you know, attach files and so that. So let me um, show you the attachment um, command there. So I'm attaching this test file, right? This is a txt file, but you could attach pretty much anything. Uh, run selection, run selection, yeah. Oops. So it couldn't find the, huh. Oh, right, right, sorry. Selection. Oops. So it cannot find the test file, that's weird. Can you believe how you test things the night before and then the next day they don't work anymore? It's like mystical. There you go. Sorry, I told you I'm still getting used to using a Mac. Send attachment. There you go. Okay. Whew. Okay. So I scroll down and I get my uh, file attachment right there. Test file. Okay. So yeah, that's one. So 
So yeah, I, I had had like I did learn a lot getting that. So let's get to the actual uh, you know listener. So all I uh, needed here was a token and the conversation ID that you wanted to be part of. I also added this auto proxy because I struggle a lot with uh, proxies um, uh, back at work. So uh, that would just take care of everything for, for, for me. But I found that it actually worked for you know, uh, proxies out of, of the company as well. So, so uh, that was a Windows only thing though. Uh, okay, So let's run that and do the infinite write host right there. So the bot is listening. So, okay. so uh, let's do my comments. Okay, so it processed that and it would return the um, the ugly list without format. And uh, yeah, because I was also getting familiar with HTML here, like at the same time. <laughs> So I have my list of available commands here. So uh, let's try to upload a CSV. These were all test uh, commands, right? That would just get you an idea of what you could do. But again, anything you could do with PowerShell, you could just drag it there and it would work, most likely. Or not. <laughs> let's see. Oh, right, right, shit, okay. I remember now, so I did an import of the uh, module again from the gallery, so it overwrote uh, <laughs> the, the changes. So basically the, the, okay, this will be a good experiment anyway. So what happened here? The, um, the examples that I had were set for Windows, right? And right now we are using a uh, Mac computer. So I just overwrote all my changes there, duh. So let me, let me actually uh, you know, do one of these, so upload CSV. Let's see what we can do about it. Uh, but how are we doing on time? Uh, so we have like 25 minutes or less, okay, cool. So we'll, we'll do this really quickly. So I'll actually stop the, the listener there and I will uh, you know, change this to get upload CSV script. So this works. And of course, this won't work. Uh, so let's actually grab a uh, a CSV file from here. Uh, this one. No, I don't need that. Uh, well, actually, I do. Oops. Yeah, of course. No, don't. Terminal. So um, let me just grab this stuff again. Sorry, I'm, I'm lazy, and so that's why I'm doing this this way. Uh, so, so this uh, won't work in a Mac, of course. So let's let's just rewrite that. So our file equals. So I will need to change this to something else. Test file. This won't work. Uh, you know what? I'll just hell with it. Machine equals uh, what is it? Local host in here. Forgot or host name. Ah, no, it's host name. I think.
Just remembering. Okay, so it's hosting. <laughs> All right. So um, let's do machine here. And I need to escape that, I believe. Yes. So let's see if that does what I want it to do. Yep, so no, it doesn't. Oh, that's the, okay. That's why, okay. There you go, oh, kind of machine, yes, because it's not declared. Run selection, out file, sorry about that. Uh, okay, well, that works. Okay, so uh, I have my new out file variable here. So select, get service doesn't work in Mac, so we will use just get process. Ah, get process. There is no name, there's no status in this get process. Select, I don't know, ID. So let's see, what can we get from get process? ID, uh, SI. Mm -hmm. Let's hopefully get like something else, I don't know, CPU. First 10, export CSV. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, there's no token right. I just wanted to see if it actually created the file, and it did. Uh, no CPU there, but okay. So for the process, it should be fine. So let's go ahead and uh, start the bot again. And all oh, right, 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 right. So yeah, killed my session there. And oh, yeah. Okay, so let's actually copy this. So I'll be using it. Oops. And let's do, uh, yeah, get service is no longer, oh wait. Should, yeah, it should be get service now, still. So let's do service. Uh, oh no, it was uh, upload CSV, sorry. And it still didn't do anything, so let's look at it again. Beam. Still can load until it should be good. Uh, all right. Okay. Still not uploading. Why is that? Circuit upload CSV. Machine get. Uh, let's see. I think it's not generating the file here. Selection. Oh, it is. All right. So. Oh, right. So. <laughs> out file. Get process. Item ID. Oh no, it's fine actually. So. Oh, I think I know what the issue is now. Ah. Uh, so let me get back to that.
so to to um, where was it config power shell seven commands upload csv and oh yeah I need to get the listener again and still doesn't work. Okay, I tried, sorry about that guys. So <laughs> let me move over to, let's check if anything else works actually, because I don't know what I did wrong. So just to do a hello world. Looks like it's not listening anymore. Uh, so let's see. So it's just everything in general. Selection. Let's try not to get the message. Yeah, okay. Just gonna have some hit attachment. Yeah, start the bot. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> So I just had to refresh the variables there. Sorry about that. So yeah, so it actually run that uh, that plugin script right there. I am just doing a PowerShell commandlet, creating a CSV out of that and sending that back as an attachment and it's right here and it should have the processes or at least some something out of it. Okay, at least I got the IDs out of that. So uh, so yeah, that's how you would create a, um, you know, uh, a plugin with, with this. It was the 1.0 version, right? So uh, <laughs> uh, I would have worked more into it, you know, um, if, 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 if everything hadn't died there. So let me now just move to the end of the presentation. So what were some use cases? Uh, so this actually got used by, by uh, my team and another team that did, uh, so my team was in charge of uh, server operations at the time, and the other guys were actually uh, desktop um, support. And what we did with this was run, uh, we triggered Ansible jobs, uh, believe it or not, and we uh, actually ran fixlets and reports and, and things with it. And the customer desktop support guy uh, and his team, they were actually um, like uh, setting up a listener in, in some uh, test machines uh, from, from some test users. And uh, you know, they interacted with the chatbot in, in the same conversation. And they run uh, you know, like common scripts that they would use to fix things like, I don't know, uh, connectivity issues or you know, uh, account uh, cleanup, things like that. So those were uh, the only two use cases that we actually uh, got to use in like real, with, with real scenarios. And let's wrap up everything. Uh, so long story short, I you know set up a whole demo. I did a demo that worked. Uh, I actually set up like a whole VMware uh, infrastructure demo that you would actually create uh, virtual machines with uh, with this same approach. Because again, anything you would have been able to do with a partial script, you know, it was you just had to drag and drop the, the script there and uh, work a little bit on it to make it work. And um, so I was lucky enough to be selected for, for a conference at the time uh, to present that. They did give me uh, like a, uh, an award for that. Um, and uh, after two months after that, the company decided to sell Circuit. And like everything I worked for uh, there like just went to the dump. And uh, I don't know why they have the infrastructure up. I don't know if any company using Circuit right now, uh, but it's still up somehow. Um, so, and we eventually, you know, got Teams, but the permissions to use the REST APIs uh, and the bot from Teams were not, uh, I'll, you know, they, they were not for everybody, and I was one of those everybody's or nobody's. <laughs> so I couldn't get to, to you know, use Brandon's, uh, Brandon Nolan's uh, module or do something with that. And I am not sad, actually. Uh, you know, that event motivated me to pursue, like, more education got me to know really cool people. Uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't have even began to play around with these different technologies otherwise. 
and uh, here I am, you know, all the way in, in Seattle meeting, meeting, you, meeting you guys and, and uh, failing miserably at, at demoing something <laughs> because I overrode my examples like uh, life. Uh, no kittens were killed during the production of this um, presentation. So in case you were worried. Uh, all right, uh, Q&A, anybody? So the, the listener would, could have been a server. Like uh, we did like a PowerShell uh, server basically that you know had all our scripts and automations. And um, but like you, so you can also run it in your uh, like own laptop. And oh, that's one I didn't show you, but yeah, it, I, I overwrote it. But actually, you can interact with your own laptop. Like uh, I was, I was able to open, for example, like uh, Chrome and open a specific website. I would just tell it like, you know, open uh, my you know uh, my favorite websites, and it would just open them up all, and so you would be able to like run that listener pretty much in any computer, right? Even your own computer. How are you getting Pipedream in your laptop? So Pipedream has REST APIs as well, and you can just uh, consume those REST APIs, and uh, that's it. Yeah, so you integrate REST APIs with, you know, so REST you're, APIs. You're, you're going out to find another server that has. Exactly, yeah, if there's any requests, and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I really recommend you, you check it out. It uh, will save you a lot of time, and um, yeah. Uh, any more questions? Did you regret being here? <laughs> Have you seen worse? <laughs> okay, so well, I'll, I'll move over to this. Look, do you guys have any stories like, like you know, like that that you know, uh, that you knew nothing about and you ended up discovering a whole new world? You you had no idea existed. <laughs> I, I had a similar uh, situation where I was trying to interface with uh, Microsoft cloud app for security. I mean, you can help defend your first cloud, whatever. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, not a very well documented API. Uh, a yeah. lot of brute force trying to figure out <laughs> exactly. what's returning where, how I'm getting data, how you know, just constant you know, going on there. I never, I never did the, the postman though, so that's definitely one of the ones that oh. I was Oh, cool. I'm, I'm glad I was able to, to uh, provide something of value to you guys. Uh, Postman is, is a really nice tool. It has even an, uh, like a terminal uh, utility that you can use. And I ended up, you know, I have worked in infrastructures that you know, were very uh, prohibitive on what you could do. And you, know, you wouldn't get permissions. And there were a lot of silos. And uh, so basically, I couldn't connect directly uh, for some reason to, to I think, was GitHub. I, I couldn't do like HTTPS or, or SSH, and uh, so I don't I don't remember how I actually used uh, Newman. It, uh, like the command line utility for Postman is called Newman, and I ended up using that to upload a CSV file to GitHub. I don't know, remember why anymore, but I just had to do it. But uh, yeah, so yeah, check check that one out. Um. Postman is a life changer. <laughs> I don't know that one. Uh, do you mind if I write that down? How's, uh, what's the name again? N A N. Oh. N H number. Oh. Dot I O. Cool. I'll check it out. And it's a, it's kind of like a low low what's called low code automation framework uh, that we're using to start doing some of the CI CD pipelines and things. Cool. So uh, yeah, just uh, for the record, that's that's Newman. I promised them I would blog about them, and I never did. <laughs> I, I will now, <laughs> so I'm kind of making up for that. But um, yeah, I can, and you can do a lot of like connecting between uh, like that didn't exist at the time. Now it does. Um, and yeah, the free tier is really, really, really uh, more than you will probably need for yeah. testing. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so. And so if you self host it, you have unlimited workflows. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, th thanks for that. It's always good to come here and share stuff. 
So uh, that Azure function, hmm? put that up like an Azure function when it runs. I have a big home line at home, so I just put mine at, at home and put it behind cloud by tunnel. Cloud by tunnel. Cool beans. Um, okay, uh, anybody else? Anything? So uh, if not, I'll give you back three minutes of your time. <laughs> so uh, you know, I was worried like this wouldn't last 90 minutes, and you know, uh, I didn't expect things to go wrong. Uh, I don't know why I didn't. Uh, they always do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, things kind of worked out in, in the end. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for being so nice and, and welcoming and. Uh, for hearing me out. Uh, so, well, thank you. Have a good day.